Welcome. In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of computing the volumes of solids using calculus. So here we're given another description for our region. We're told our region is bounded by y equals 2 minus x squared and the x-axis. We're also told we want to find the volume of the solid whose base is this region and the cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis are quarter circles. Let us begin with the sketch of the base. As you can see here, we have our sketch. And we're told that the cross sections are quarter circles. So I'm gonna quickly sketch what a quarter circle looks like. But before I do that, I should label this base. And here is cross section. So as you can see, that's what a cross section looks like. And this is a quarter circle. We could. All right, so before I continue, I want to show what this three-dimensional shape will look like. Um, none of our tech demos really have a nice automatic way to graph the 3D shape, so I'm going to take you to GeoGebra and demonstrate how to draw one cross-section, so one slice, and then I'll leave the video on, but in a faster, fast-forward sort of way, so that if you want to, you can see how to create several of these slices to get a better idea of shapes, or you can just fast forward to the end of that construction and see what the three-dimensional shape will look like. So here's GeoGebra. If you're going to follow along, you want to go ahead and click on GeoGebra Classic. And then here, let's type in f of x equals 2 minus x squared. And then the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis. So I'm going to draw a segment of one cross section from here to here. And now that this is done, I want to view, so I'm going to click on these three lines, go to view, and I want to see my 3D graphics. And if you notice, there is our same parabola in green across the x-axis here, and here's the vertical axis, the y-axis. Um, and the y-axis is also green, the x-axis is red, and this segment here corresponds to this segment. So now I need one more point. I need a floating point up here. So I'm going to type in the x value of negative 1, the y value of 1, and then the z value. Well, what is the z value? The z value is this radius here. And this is the entire radius of the quarter circle. And the radius is 1, 2. And now I'm going to tap on my 3D view and the menu changes. So if you notice, if I'm in 2D view, I have these options. If I'm in 3D view, I have new options. And I'm going to tap here and go to Circular Arc and click on point A, point B, to point C. And there's my arc. And it doesn't actually finish it off for me, so I'm going to click a segment here and just finish it. So this is one slice of my solid. All right. So let's draw a couple more, and at this point you could fast forward to the end of the construction or you could just watch how I'm doing this. I'm going to basically just create segments going across or, or orthogonal to the y-axis, and then I'm going to add floating points like I did, and then I'm going to connect them with an arc and then a segment. Okay, so if you had the patience to watch me do this, here is the result. So as you can see, I have quarter circles. And then to look at a two-dimensional view, here's the same two-dimensional view. So in red, I have the x-axis. In green, I have the y-axis. These are all how uh, the slices, that is the cross-sections, would look like lines on the two-dimensional plane. And then when we rotate it, we see that these cross-sections perpendicular to our y-axis here in green are these quarter circles. And then imagine filling that in with a lot more of these. I could do an infinite number of them. I mean, I actually could it, but imagine having an infinite number of these quarter circle cross sections. Eventually it would start to look like this big bulky shape coming down to a small spot here. And the radius is completely dependent on where you are in the parabola. 
So a, a slice here closer to the x-axis has a much wider radius than, say, this slice up here that's closer to 2 along the y-axis. So this circle along the, or quarter circle closer to the x-axis is definitely taller than the circles go um, as you travel above or travel up along the x-axis. All right, so now let's go ahead and find the volume of this really cool looking three-dimensional shape. So this entire distance here in green is the radius. We need to take a moment and figure out what this radius actually is because our goal right now is to find the area of the cross section. So before we can start on volume, if you recall, volume is the area of our cross section written in either of these two ways. So right now is our goal is find area as a function of x or area as a function of y. So what is this smaller distance here? This smaller distance here is x. And this region is symmetric about the y-axis, so this distance here is also x. That tells me that r is equal to 2x. And now before we continue on writing out the area of this quarter circle, let's actually determine if we will be integrating with respect to x or with respect to y. So if we look at our base here, and if I were to draw this rectangle here, that's basically what one of the slices will be. So the base of a slice that I just sketched out is this bottom part here in red. That is this same base here. Well, that base of this slice has a width here, up in this direction, from here to here, given by the change in y, so delta y. That means we know we're going to have to rewrite our area function with respect to y. So let's go ahead and start by rewriting this as a function of y. Let's begin by rewriting the equation that bounds our region in terms of y. So this is x equals the square root of 2 minus y. This means our radius is equal to 2 times the square root of 2 minus y. So the area of a circle is given by pi r squared, but I want a quarter circle. So I want 1 fourth pi r squared. That means my function representing the area is pi times 2 times the square root of 2 minus y. This quantity squared here divided by 4. This simplifies to 2 minus y times pi. Now I can compute the volume of this region with respect to y, and y goes from starting at 0 all the way up to 2. So the smallest y value is at 0, the largest y value is at 2. Integrating, we end up with pi times 2y minus y squared over 2 from 0 to 2. This gives us pi times 4 minus 2, which is just 2 pi. So the volume of this solid, as pictured on the right here, you can see it moving, is equal to 2 pi. I hope this video was helpful.